As one of our winter projects while we're in Oban, we'll be installing a diesel heater. In order to fit the heater in and make the best use of the space, we've decided to redesign our saloon area by replacing the swivel chairs and drop-down table with a soon-to-be full-length couch and side table with copious amounts of storage underneath. Stage one was building a frame, and if you haven't seen that episode, click on the link above. Now it's time to make this cube look like a proper couch. So we found the sunniest section of the whole marina to do some outdoor work. Uh, it's like really cold and icy today. Uh, so what we've done is uh, we've made up some stencils. <laughs> we've made up some stencils using my trusty wrapping paper. And uh, these stencils are all of the outward facing um, sections of wood that are going to be kind of on display. And we've got some really nice plywood here from the yard. Uh, it's like elite plywood, um, good marine stuff. And the out, uh, the, the wood section is actually really nice where we can varnish it up, stain it or varnish it. So we're going to do that. So now we're just going to um, cut around the stencils and, uh, and yeah, cut, cut the wood down. So I'm just using this piece of wood as a straight edge to run the saw along so we can sort of pre-designate the path of the blade and there's no like awkward, you know, freehand stuff. Just kind of straight along an edge, even if it's, well, no. You get it right before you cut and then you lock it in and it's just one straight movement. That's the goal anyway. <laughs> oh, I hate this saw. Oh. Battery. Literally the last cut. Oh my god. And we only have one. <sighs> All right. Come back in half an hour. Tea break. During our tea break, we found a friend who had a healthy supply of woodworking tools and finished cutting some of the curved pieces of ply with his tools. We then made the final cut and went to go see how it all fit on the boat. All right, Grumpy Pants. I'm still waiting on that cup of tea you promised me an hour ago, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not explaining anything until I get my tea. Okay, um... This is where we cut to Adam and be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. So we've got the surfaces, most of the surfaces done. We used some, oh, I forgot the name of the wood. Elite. Elite ply, and the wood that the veneer is, it's got a, essentially got a veneer on it. Um, so we can polish and varnish up the outward, outwards facing surfaces straight onto the ply and it'll have a nice finish. I'm told it'll have a nice finish. So it costs a little bit more, quite a bit more, but now we don't have to buy and apply uh, the veneer. So it's one less step and down the track I, I should hope this age is much better than a, a, a veneer would. So that's what we've done. Here we are. We've got the surfaces cut um, which is helping, helping stiffen up the structure a lot. Um, the plan now is to sort of, we've oversized each of the surfaces and then we're just going to creep in on it because as I said the other day, nothing is square on a boat. So you can't just be like, yup, 90 by 30, cut a square, bang, it's perfect. Cause every corner has a little, you know, the, the floor and the, and the wall join and they kind of bow out slightly and there's a bit of a lip here and nothing is square. So everything is bespoke. Um, so we've made it all about five mil bigger than it needs to be and we're just sort of creeping in on it, planing it and ultimately I will plane it by hand back flush with the frame so that when the top deck goes down it sits perfectly flush and that's the plan anyway. Okay, the front face is glued and screwed. As you can see, I've got it clamped on 
I'm using a bit of sort of waste wood uh, to protect it from the clamps. So far so good though, I'm just going to let this glue dry now and move on to other jobs. And then uh, once it's set, I will plane all of this surface perfectly flat so that when the top board goes down, it's not like wobbly. Um, yeah, making progress. It is officially a box. <laughs> it's got four, yeah, it's got four walls. It's officially a box. Yay, finally, we can say we made a 3D We've box. We made a box. <laughs> Only a week later. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit. We've had some down days, but it's been a bit time consuming, that's for sure. Certainly longer than I thought it would take. It's one of those thing in the details, you know, like you, you're like, oh, we'll just smash together a box. How hard can it be? But you forget that the boat isn't straight, the floor's not straight. Every piece is going to have its own little quirk and its own little sort of bespoke needs. So, yeah, but we got there in the end. So I'm making pretty good progress at the moment. A lot of glue is drying, a lot of things are just clamped down, so I don't want to mess too much with that part of it. Um, so I figured I would move on to making the access door for this little bedside table sort of thing that we're making. Um, fortunately for me, the old door for what was there fits vertically, not horizontally. It slots in quite nicely actually perfectly to be honest with you it's a total coincidence we didn't measure it up that way but it is almost centimeter perfect to be honest more better than that it's millimeter perfect so really all i have to do my plan is to essentially take a section out of the middle to shorten the door i'll bang out all the slats because i'm not rejoining every one of these slats and i will take the nice timber that is here and build a section so that we can varnish it up it'll basically it'll be the same as this with a frame around it and a handle and the same hinges and all of that um, here so I think that's sort of the most efficient way to do it and also bring us a nice finish whilst reusing this quite nice wood because this isn't crap wood this is uh, I don't know what it is but it is hardwood it's really nicely done so I kind of want to preserve of my, as much of it as I can um, so I've made a start on the other door, essentially have cut out, knocked out the slats sections and I'm just preparing the surface to drop in a ply, uh, the, the ply that we have and then I'll put sort of some backing plates on it to make it whole and then I'm preparing the corners here to sort of do that and then that'll be that. We'll, uh, you know, I'll work on the details and the trimmings once it's all together and it fits the space. It's coming together reasonably quickly. Um, making good progress today I'm sort of I'm in the I'm in the zone I don't know whether you could uh, attribute it to this but Kiara has been absent all day <laughs> and I have been allowed to just put my headphones in and get after it and I've made leaps and bounds so I, knew I, that was coming. I don't know if that's you know there's a correlation there but <laughs> One can wonder, and I can keep wondering. I'm going back to my tomorrow. <laughs> because Kiara has yelled at me for not keeping everyone updated on my latest and greatest <laughs> every single move I make. Uh, oh, it's interesting. What I'm doing now is. I've just cut down the door. That's that's it finished from last night. The glue has set. It is not, I would, I would put a screw through it, but what I'm about to say will make it clear why I'm not gonna do that. So I've got some three mil ply right here, and I'm going to essentially put the back of the, put the three mil ply on the back of the door frame, which will give me uh, something to sort of screw it all into, which will make it sort of rigid so I don't have to worry about the, the edges where it's glued falling apart anymore and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nice finish ply that we're planning to varnish up that we paid a bit extra for because it allegedly gets a nice finish I'm going to cut out a section of that and drop it into here which will give me um, it'll be about about three mil shy of this sort of this face here so when it's all done you should have this frame with a nice uh, with a nice plywood inner um, that is about three mil shy of the uh, the trimming, if you will, the edge trimmings, um, and then we'll varnish it, clean it, varnish it, sand it beforehand, 
and it should come up quite nice. It'll be structurally sound and it will look um, consistent with the rest of the skirtings and the rest of the sides that we will also have sanded and varnished. So now you know what I'm doing. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. To uh, put the glue in and get the clamps on it, really. I wish glue worked faster. <laughs> sort of a, like, it's a bit of a bit disruptive for your day. You know? Once that's glued on, I'll sand that flush with the frame, and then the door will go in, and then and then I'll do the hinges, and then that'll be that ready for varnish. Nice. Okay. Well, we've gotten the box. Our two boxes into enough of a state where we're gonna start painting and sealing. If we try and, if we do any more and if we glue any more down, then we won't have the opportunity to seal the ends of this wood. So I'm gonna get, in fact, we're probably a little bit past that now, but I'm gonna kind of sneak a paintbrush into there and, and make sure we, it's as sealed as it can be. So that's the job now, is, uh, is all the sections that are gonna be behind um, covers, I'm gonna be painting white, and then eventually, um, maybe in a few more days, I'll be painting the front of it, like the, the nice front, and sealing the nice front with like a varnish. Um, but for now is the white job, just sealing all the ends of the wood with white and the backs of the walls. I won't lie, I am very, very much looking forward to the end of woodworking. We're trying to clean up every night and have it and have this place as habitable as possible while we're doing this. But the amount of like sawdust and dust in the place is just crazy. Um, I really, really can't wait until we stop cutting into wood and, and having to clean up and vacuum every single night. It's getting very dirty in here. It's very, this whole place afterwards needs like a thorough dusting. Especially um, our boat has so many louvres, louvres, these things. Um, and my God, like every time there's just so much dust everywhere and it's going to be such a nightmare to clean. Not looking forward to that part. Okay, final product uh, of the door. We just uh, stuck a bit of ply in here. As soon as it gets sanded and um, beautified a little more. But you can see it's turned out really, really well though. And we've sanded the edges so it fits perfectly in the door. Hinges are all on, that's the back. So there we go. I'm, I'm actually really, really pleased with this door. It looks really, really snazzy. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. The top is officially glued down. There's no going back. Uh, this, this is where the heat is gonna sit and it's gonna sit in the profile of this um, blue tape behind me. And then the plumbing will all go down in here and run along the bottom of the table and the gravity fed tank will be in this cupboard which is kind of an awkward shaped cupboard but it's perfect for all the plumbing for the heater um, yeah so the the next job will be to have some skirting I guess you could call it or edge trimmings molding moldings made up so that there'll be like a much like all of the other tables like the kitchen is a great example um, it's just sort of got a little lip like a two inch lip so that things don't fall off the table and it generally also hides the slightly less than perfect edges which even if they were perfect, it would still be the side of plywood, which is sort of very hard to make look good. Um, so we're gonna have like a trimming here and here, which will sort of be the, the the feature piece of the whole the whole thing. In addition to like varnishing up these nice wooden surfaces and putting a nice satin finish on them, there'll be what I assume is gonna be a gloss varnish on the trimmings and it yeah, it'll look really nice. I'm quite quite excited to see it when it's finished. So today's job is to put the these walls on, these sort of backing plates, and to cut a hatch into each of them so that we have storage behind there and under here, which was obviously the plan. Um, I think that'll take me the rest of the day, so that's that's all I'll give you for now. Oh, it's full. It's done. Maybe we cut that slightly too small. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> but technically, the first sit on the throne. The first sit on the chair, yeah, on the seat. Right, so there'll be a backrest here. So the sitting height will be a few, where's a cushion? That'll give me a guide. <laughs> there, that is the sitting height. Lovely. And Very that, good. And then that's the back Now we'll just do the painted wall in the background and get that sorted. I think that's plenty sturdy. I don't feel dodgy about that. 
I probably will pile cushions here. Oof. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> That's plenty. Did you kill me? You could just start sitting here now. Like at the end of the day, we'll just put the put the deck back on. I intend to. <laughs> and so the intention is to do away with that chair, and we're going to build essentially an ottoman that clips clips onto this face and makes an extension, and then clips onto the wall under the chart table, so that when you're underway, you've kind of got yourself another. I think we had had a two meters or 180 of length for the foam. So it'll go all the way down there. So you will actually be able to sleep here. And then when you want to use the chart table, you just sort of unclip that, unclip that, and you can rotate it or pull it back or push it forward. Because as we said before, these chairs look great, but in practice, they're just, they don't work. Like you can sit in it and you swivel, but as a desk, spending any meaningful amount of time at it, you can't get close enough to the desk and you get, this lip gives you sort of sore arms. So the, like these things just make it sort of points for trying, but it doesn't work. Um, and you're giving up so much in order to have them. So we're thinking that with the Ottoman, one, you get the storage inside, two, you can pull it into the table, three, you now have a second sleeping berth, a transient berth that can have a leak cloth and all that. Um, and four, if you ever do have a big dinner table, di dinner party or whatever, we now have a portable seat that can shift over so like the chef can sit there and now you've got two, four, five, maybe even six at that table as opposed to like two awkwardly seated people here who can't quite get to their dinner. It, yeah, just it's gonna, it'll be different but I think it'll function a lot better. I yeah. like it already with the, um, with our fabric on. What's that, with this? Yeah, yeah. it'll look nice with this. Actually, yeah. I haven't seen it, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is really nice. Actually, yeah, it's pretty comfy. Yeah. Oh, I can easily find myself reading books here. So you'll just be like plonked next Snack to the fire, behind here. melting, but you'll be <laughs> super warm. Uh, with the heat is on, I would just switch over to that couch side. There's, it would be way too hot here, I would yeah. imagine. You wouldn't I'd spend the afternoon this No, way. like the whole idea is to add like an extra berth and just like better seating arrangement, but not to have it as like your initial first come, first, cur first serve sp um, flop spot. We still have the whole couch area over there for that, so I'm not too fussed about the heat issue here. It's good though, it looks really good. It feels really comfortable. Good job, babe. Eh?